All right. Hey, everyone again. This is Sean. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today during this module about the Code of Act and Community Conduct. Um, a lot of times you'll just hear this referred to as the Code or the Code of Community Conduct. Um, really, it all focuses on the same thing, but it's more encompassing than just Community Conduct because it does hit on some academic policies as well. Um, during this module, we're going to be chatting about, a little bit about what the Code of Act and Community Conduct actually is. Uh, talk about how it's a little different from just your basic like living guide and the different policies out late, or laid out in that. Um, and really hit on some of the big, probably the most frequently um, violated um, aspects of the code of acting community conduct that you may run into on a daily, weekly, or just during your time as an RA basis. So really the purpose of the community con or code of community conduct, as we'll call it from here on out, um, is to help students live in a way that's really, you know, follows the mission and values of Mission Tech. Um, you know, when students enroll um, upon a time of enrollment, that's uh, when they have to begin adhering to the code and it really, you know, continues with them throughout their time here at Tech. Um, it's designed to give students a fair and equitable conduct process to make sure that everyone's being held to the same standards um, and, you know, lay out basically, you know, here's what you as a student can expect from the university should you choose to do these things. Um, the purpose behind that is to make sure that you know you don't have two students who violate the same policy and get held to very different standards. Um, you know, it just holds, helps with that consistency piece. Uh, it's designing educational and guiding principles. It's not a criminal or civil trial. So, um, you know, when our students violate this, if we're not, you know, sending them to jail, we're not sending them to, um, you know, prison or anything like that, um, but they will be held accountable and we will, there will be aspects um, and, you know, consequences to their actions um, that we designed based on this code. So how it's different, the Code of Community Conduct applies to all Michigan Tech students, both on and off campus. Um, it applies online and in person, so, you know, students can violate some of these aspects while, you know, taking online courses or being away. Uh, and, you know, just using the R, some of the resources and training themselves um, in certain ways on social media. Um, it includes active and community conduct related policies, so it's not just purely, you know, stuff that's happening while they're living in the residence halls, for example. It may be stuff that gets reported um, because they're, you know, not making great choices in classes. Uh, it's, a hope, it's meant to really help be educational to students um, about how to be a Husky. Um, the, housing living, or the Housing Living Guide, on the other hand, uh, very similar, and there's a lot of pieces. In fact, there's a, co uh, there's a component within the Code of Community Conduct that supports the Living Guide, um, but it's policies that apply directly to the students who live on campus and are residence halls. Um, some of those can apply to stuff that's happening either online, you know, if a student posts pictures of themselves drinking in their rooms on social media, um, we can follow up with that, that just the same way as we would if an RA found them doing it in person. Um, it's meant to allow for a safe and comfortable living environment for our students directly living on campus. Um, it's also meant to be educational um, and help set expectations for what we want our residential students to live by. Uh, and it deals with more than just violations as well. It's some, you know, just policies about, hey, here's how high to lock your bed. Um, and, you know, just it's, it's really meant to have that educational component. So we're going to move into some common violations. You may see some of these, you may not. Um, these are things to just be kind of aware of as you were, um, you know, keeping kind of a tab of the uh, Code of Community Conduct. So academic misconduct, this is not something you will deal with as directly. Um, it could happen if students are cheating, you know, while working on stuff in, um, you know, one of our common spaces, uh, you know, practicing plagiarism, you know, they're, you know, copying each other's papers, and it's something that you pick up on and have to report um, that is underneath the Code of Community Conduct. Alcohol violations, so use, possession, distribution, or sale of alcohol. Um, this tends to be one of our bigger ones because, you know, let's be real, our students drink. Uh, we want them to be safe. We want them to have a good experience here at Tech, and alcohol, if used improperly, can be very disruptive to that. Um, by standing, this is something that gets a lot of our students without them realizing it. Um, it's basically, you know, if you are observing, present for, or just don't report a very obvious violation of a code, um, you can be held accountable for bystanding. Discriminatory behavior, this we a lot of times see this the vandalism that happens in our halls. 
Um, this is based on identity, and so it's a hugely um, wide array of things that can fall underneath it. You know, if it's based on race, uh, gender, sexual orientation, religion, um, any number of things. Uh, it's, you know, if you have questions on this, please ask because uh, we want our students to feel comfortable living here and we want them to be free of harassment, and so we care a lot about this one. Uh, disruptive behavior, um, this is really, I mean, it's very broad. You know, if you, students are being disruptive, um, we can hold them accountable for disruptive behavior. And so that's, you know, basically disrupting anyone from being able to enjoy and use university premises in the, uh, or the surrounding community. So, you know, if people are belligerently running down the halls while being drunk and loud, uh, that's something that would fall under this as well as alcohol. Um, drugs, it's kind of the same thing as alcohol, you know. Um, pretty much any use of illegal drugs falls underneath this category, uh, marijuana being the most prevalent, and so um, this is how we hold our students accountable. Uh, failure, failure to comply with uh, official requests, this is big for you, so if you have students who um, you're asking for their ID and they're saying, no, 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 I'm not going to give it to you, I don't do what you say, or if you're, you know, have a student who is being belligerent and, you know, refusing to cooperate with you, it has to be a legitimate request. You can't walk in and say, hey, give me your iPod, or hey, you know, like, let me play on your Xbox, and the student's like, no, I'm not really about that. That doesn't fall under this, but you know, if a student is actively obstructing um, something that you're doing while you're doing rounds, um, that is failure to comply with an official um, official request. Moving fixtures and furnitures, this happens a lot during move-in, um, when people move their stuff out and are like, oh hey, I can just get rid of this whole bed because I brought my own mattress. No, you can't because it's moving university equipment and furnitures. Post liability, this is what we see a lot of because students will have their buddies over from other universities and forget to tell them, oh hey, you can't run naked through the residence halls while drinking and um, tearing down white, or uh, tearing down bulletin boards. And so that's failure to inform guests of applicable university policies. Um, we can get the students who are acting as the host um, should they choose to not inform their guests. Um, information technology resources. Uh, this is something you probably won't, probably won't deal with a ton of. You know, we do have students who choose to use our wireless and other uh, technological resources inappropriately. Um, and this is just, you know, this is something that does happen with our residence halls because students don't like X, Y, and Z about how, you know, the internet routers work and so they decide to do some big fancy thing. Um, so if you have questions about it, this is again another one you can ask, we ask that you ask about it so we can help you uh, navigate it. Uh, property damage and destruction, pretty obvious, you know, if people are destroying things that are owned by the property, or owned by the university, that falls underneath here sexual and relationship misconduct. Um, so we have an entire set of university policies based around it that you'll learn more about, um, you know, kind of throughout your training. Um, and so, if, you know, people are creating unsafe, uncomfortable um, environments based around um, sexual or relational um, issues, that falls under here. Smoking and tobacco, this is really based on the fact that we are a smoke-free campus, and that includes smoking um, you know, whether that's cigarettes or cigars, electronic cigarettes, uh, vapor, like vapor pens, uh, pretty much any of those things, they all fall under this Solic solicitation. Um, this is, if you notice, uh, you know, a business in the community is coming into your residence halls and trying to sell things, um, or if you have a student who's trying to act as like a rep for a beauty products, um, you know, uh, company, uh, and they don't have proper approval, which is very rare to get in terms of selling things in the halls. We want to protect our students from being harassed and bothered by this kind of stuff. Uh, stolen property, uh, this is huge. You really don't do a ton with this as an RA. You report all, or you refer all stolen property to public safety, um, and they really are the ones who are equipped to help with this. Uh, here, like I said, any violations of the housing residential life policies that fall in our living guide um, can be held accountable under this. Um, and then weapons, so students who are not registering their weapons and keeping that public safety, you know, the student has a bow and arrow or a samurai sword that's chilling in their room, um, that would under here. So, this is some, definitely not all, of the aspects of the community, or code of community conduct. 
um, know that you may run into other ones. The code is posted on Academic Community Conduct's website, so make sure that you're checking that out. If you have questions, talk to your professional staff, and yeah.